One final topic I want to discuss with polyprotic systems is the idea of the principal species, meaning what is the uh, species that's at the highest concentration in a given solution, uh, depending on pH. So if you think about having a solution of, uh, you know, phosphoric acid, H3PO4, um, as we change the pH, the composition will change. This is especially relevant when thinking about um, uh, indicators, as we'll talk about in the next chapter for acid-base species, because uh, the reason acid-base indicators work is that different uh, versions of that with different protonations of that indicator are different colors, and that's how we observe the color change. And the color change happens as the pH changes because the principal species changes. Um, we can think about this in, the terms, in terms of buffers if we want. Uh, but let's think about H3PO4. Um, so we sort of have some, some guiding points. So at very low pH, we will have all, or not all, but mostly H3PO4. So we'll have the fully protonated form. Then as we, if we start raising the pH, we'll reach a point where we'll have equal H3PO4 will equal H2PO4 minus. So as we start raising the pH, we're adding hydroxide or something, and it's uh, deprotonating our H3PO4. It's going to react. So as we raise the pH, at some point we reach the place where this, these are equal. Um, and this is something we can get from the henderson hasselbalch equation. This will be equal to pKa1, which again for uh, phosphoric acid, let me recheck what the value is here. This is 2.148. We'll round it to 2.15. So at pKa or pH equals 2.15, the concentrations of these species are equal. If we keep going though, if we keep raising the pH, we will get to the dominant species will instead become the dihydrogen phosphate. As the as the phosphoric acid keeps uh, getting deprotonated by whatever we're using to raise the pH. And at a certain point, all the H3PO4 minus will get used up. Uh, sorry, H3PO4, no minus, will get used up and will have all become H2PO4 minus. And then as we keep raising the pH, that H2PO4 minus is going to start turning into monohydrogen phosphate with only one, one proton on it. And we'll reach a point where the, cons the amount of H3PO4 minus is equal to the amount of HPO4 2 minus. And this will occur at pKa2, which again for, uh, for phosph phosphoric acid, this is 7.20. So at a P pH, say pH equals pKa equals 7.20. That's where these concentrations are equal to each other. And then as we keep proceeding, our system will mostly be just hydrogen phosphate, HPO4 2 minus. And, but we'll have yet another transition as we keep increasing the pH, where again, these will be equal, the concentration of HPO4 2 minus will be equal to the concentration of just PO4 3 minus, equal to the phosphate. And this is where pH equals pKa3, which is 12.38. So at a high enough pH, we've now converted, and once we go past that point, as the pH keeps increasing, where we will have just, or primarily I should say, not just, but primarily phosphate. There'll still be some hydrogen phosphate uh, present as well in equilibrium with the phosphate. Depending, the exact value will depend on the pH, and we could calculate it with the anderson hasselbalch equation. But uh, this is just a, an illustration of showing that as we move across a different range of pH, we're going to have different uh, species that are the, the principal species, the, the highest concentration species in our solution. They're not the only one, right? In, in, in any of these, at any pH, you'll have a little bit of any of them. Um, but, you know, for example, if you're at a pH of, say, 13, mostly you'll have phosphate, then you'll have a little bit of hydrogen phosphate, and you'll have essentially zero of, say, phosphoric acid, H3PO4. All of it will be deprotonated. 
um, there will be a tiny, tiny amount that's still present based on the equilibrium constant, but it's going to be pretty negligible. So this is just showing how, you know, looking at a specific example of phosphoric acid, how as we change the pH values, we, we can use these values of pH where the, they're equal to the pKa. Those are sort of our anchoring points to decide, you know, to show as we're moving from one to the other. Um, and we could calculate this, again, using the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. We could figure out the exact composition, uh, but this is a... Yeah, this is a good way to think about what's going on in these systems. So that concludes chapter 10 on polyprotic acids and bases. Uh, so next, uh, in the next chapter, we'll look at doing titrations and uh, understanding titration curves, both for monoprotic systems and also polyprotic systems.